Thank you guys very much. Give Ducky a big hand. Yeah. Thanks, I love you, brother. I love you. Kill it. All right. Thank you. Okay. I feel like I don't need to go through this part, <clears throat> like because uh, Dr. Chaos Taylor already did. But my name, as you know, is Ducky. Uh, some people call me Scott Melnick. I am the principal security research and developer uh, for Bulletproof. Um, I've been in the gaming industry for over 13 years. I worked for a slot company. I've done everything from uh, slot development, system software, security, security ops. I had the whole IT networking, everything career like probably most of you. Uh, I have uh, over six patents in that field. Uh, this is my information. Uh, to get in touch with me, uh, and I imagine you can find those on the uh, slide. So what we're talking about, um, the what, what is Hustler Casino Live? It's an online streaming real money game poker tournament, and they air every night where they invite some of the best uh, poker cash players and uh, stream it online. Uh, there's uh, quite a lot of streaming. Uh, some buy-ins have exceeded $1 million on the show. You have to pony up a million in, of your own cash and chips to get on. So, you know, what happened <clears throat> in November of 2022, uh, there was a newcomer. She was a, a casual leisure uh, player uh, by the name of Robbie J. Lud. She was accused of cheating. Uh, her opponent, which we'll get into, uh, shoved for all in. Uh, and she won a $269,000 uh, pot, which with a poker hand that she probably should have folded uh, before the actual uh, flop. So basically, um, everything just went wild, man, after that. And you'll hear the announcer. Uh, these streams are uh, delayed. So the announcer uh, who announces on YouTube, he doesn't even know what's going on. He has no knowledge just to keep it kind of real. And so after that, the internet went wild. Reddit, Twitter, podcasts, the whole world was like, this is weird. She is cheating, um, without a doubt. And uh, Garrett Adelson was known, uh, Adelstein is known as one of the top cash players. Uh, and uh, he, uh, she beat her. Eat them. So the whole world, even these guys, if you believe they're coming or not, if you've been watching the conspiracy theories, I'm pretty sure uh, they think uh, that she cheated too. So right now, in case you haven't seen the hand, uh, I'm going to show it. hope the video uh, goes well. Um, you will recognize, if you do follow poker, one of the uh, very famous all-time poker players and card players, Phil Ivey, is here at the table. He folded pretty quick with a better hand, actually. And um, uh, let's watch it. And we don't have sound. I'm going to pause this. I'm sorry? I, I can if I have to, uh, but it's important to kind of hear uh, what's going on. So I need to check windows. Speaker tune. I'll try it again. Okay. Is windows on mute? It is. I don't know. I was responsible uh, for muting this. Wow, Robbie really makes it enough up here. Garrett's raise with Jack Four off. It's wine versus wine, and Garrett here has flopped a straight flush draw. 10 10 9 with a couple clubs. He's going to bet 2,500. Wow, and Robbie's going to call here with Jack Four with the Jack of Clubs. Turn is a three, puts backdoor hearts down. And this is usually when Garrett will lay the hammer down with combo draws. He's going to bet 10,000. And I think Robbie should have probably been out of his hand pre flop. That's a car payment. Down She's payment. got a one club and one heart. And wow, look at this. What is she thinking about here? She's going to raise it. 
We saw her raise Ace King a little bit ago for a min raise. Here she's gonna min click Jack four. And you know Garrett is just so experienced. Wait, hold on, let me scratch her face. That's the shit I got. How often would she do this with a 10? Could he possibly bet three bet here? I mean, she just min clicked the turn. If he calls, it could be about two pot size bets left. So, I mean, that's what's got to be going through his head here. I think he's considering bet three betting. And, yep, there's the all in. There's the all in. Garrett, like I said, he's just so experienced in bet patterns, bet sizing. I, uh, this would have gone forever. He's gonna put a time chip out? Real many games have options to, like, call a timeout when you really have to think about something. Uh, shit talking's happening right here. She calls? once, but it's up to you. <laughs> oh my god! What is going on here? once, but it's up to you. We're talking about running it twice, uh, the river, which you can do, so it could end up 50-50 split. We'll go to the river. The river is a nine. That one's you for sure. They're gonna run it twice. And she's gonna small pair. You give me that much credit? I don't know. She's good with the first one. Let's turn him over. You know what I mean? Oh, no, no, no. Wait for it. The cards are correct. What's it called? And the river breaks out again! Oh my god. Oh my god. I need I want to see. Does she have Jack 4? What? Look at Jack. Whoa, that's. Look at Garrett's face. That is. That was a fucking poker right there. That was sick. Wow. That is super, super strange. You can see his reaction. Like, what is... What? Yeah. Oh, there's why the last, <laughs> thanks, guy. 20 years in tech, thank you. Hello? Okay, there we go. This is better anyways. Wow, um, I'm very technical, I, by the way. This is why they called me in on this. Um, yeah, so if you don't understand poker and why she should have never even had this hand, don't worry about it. It's not the fun part, but everyone in the poker world knows you don't really keep that uh, hand and play it out. Um, and you see the look on his face, and if you watch the whole video, it's not hard to find. Just look up J4 Hustler uh, Scandal. And it continues, he's talking. He's like, that's not a poker hand. And he's running the whole game uh, through his head, trying to figure out what possibly could have gone on. And uh, he has been cheated before. Um, not on uh, not on live TV though. Sorry, live YouTube. So 
so we got called in. So um, as you know, I work for Bulletproof. So why Hustler Live decided we're going to have an uh, investigation here. Everyone's really upset uh, about this cheating. And there had been uh, the, like the postal cheating uh, a few years uh, back before that, and they never investigated it and said everything's fine. So Hustler Casino Live did the right thing. And they said, let's just get a security expert in here and look at everything. So why bulletproof? Well, as you heard at the beginning, we have gaming experts. We have gaming experts in this business, in the casino and lottery business. And of course, we're security experts. But we're also owned and a part of a GLI company. Um, we are a GLI company, and that's Gaming Laboratories International. What gaming labs do is they write the guidelines for gaming regulations. And states, countries, everyone uses those guidelines and they make regulations. So every state has different regulations. So Nevada, for instance, has regulations based off of GLI's recommendations. So once they do that, all the vendors have to uh, comply with that, you know, they make their slot machine or their deck shuffler, and they submit it to the lab where it goes through the states, whatever specifications they did, they test it, and they give it the stamp of approval. So we also have that resource. But what's important here about the gaming experts is there are so many nuances in gaming and really understand how it works. Coming from the outside, you think, oh, this is unsecure. But you have to understand you know, like the mitigations and like what to do and how things work. Kind of like cockpits and airplanes are unsecure uh, if the doors open. Uh, we kind of know that. So the FAA actually has a lot of rules about how to secure that uh, door because there's nothing else you can do. But so they secure the door, pilots have procedures. It's kind of, that's an analogy. And so that's why it's important why they picked us. So the scope, the scope was like a dream come true. Uh, they're like, hey, look for evidence of cheating, uh, address all these conspiracies, which we're gonna get into, and figure out all the ways you can cheat, and then tell us how, and uh, we're gonna close that. I mean, what a dream. You're asking me to figure out how to cheat? <laughs> I mean, who gets an assessment like that, right? And, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, challenge accepted. Um, so let me tell you about this talk, though. Um, so now I'm going on this assessment blindly. I have no idea what they have, and uh, I've got to do this quick. So this is kind of a war story. And per the last slide, this is why you hire hackers. So, you know, I went in and did all the forensic stuff, you know, imaging machines, whatever. We can, you know, you learn that, Forensics 101 but they don't kind of teach you how to cheat and figure out and hack stuff. And this is what was needed. And this is why you hire hackers, or why you should, all of you. And really, the root of this talk, even though it's going to be a lot of war story, this is how security conferences, mainly DEF CON, have been coming since DEF CON 13, and before that, um, HOPE, a uh, long time. And this is about how the community has really helped me with all these facets of technology, whether I was interested in it or not, I saw it, and I made so many friends, and it's kind of like having a catalog in your back pocket of experts when you need them, and that can teach you. This is before ChatGPT. <laughs> and you can get accurate information from your friends. Um, so let's address the conspiracies uh, for a moment here. So this is the signaling uh, conspiracy that she was accused of using a vibrating ring. Uh, she was accused of using a sex toy and a TENS unit. The sex toy probably may have come because this was a few months after the chess cheating uh, scandal, if you're familiar with it, where I think uh, Elon Musk kind of suggested that uh, the guy was wearing a sex toy and being signaled. And I think it just kind of flowed over from that. So 
this is one of the conspiracies uh, that uh, I had to uh, deal with. And then there was a lot more, and we're not going to get into it, but I had to, uh, people like the card shufflers rigged, there's unsecure uh, secure communications to the booth, and the cameraman, like they can hear, someone can pick up all the chatter of what's going on in the booth. She had special sunglasses. And about the rigged card shuffler, um, I submitted this talk back in June, or the final slides, so I didn't really get to change them. But there was a talk at Black Hat kind of based off of this. So I'm going to add a few more things to that, and then we'll move on. So before I even got there, there was all these complications. Um, she gave the money back to him. <laughs> Whoa. Um, she said you know, she felt threatened and cornered, and maybe she did. I wasn't there. I didn't look at that video. But to the poker world, it was an admittance of guilt. And like, I don't want this to go any further. I'm just going to give the money back and make this go away. Um, yeah, it didn't. Um, it was just a bit of guilt. So I don't know. You know, maybe she should have spoke to a lawyer. But she did it right after the game. Oh, boy, it gets better. <laughs> this guy, what a piece of work. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to butcher his last name, but Brian, still on the run from the police and a wanted man in L.A., well, he worked for Hustler Live Productions in the booth, so he had knowledge of the hold cards. He knew all the cards the players had. So I'm going to take a sip of water. He had knowledge uh, of that. So when Hustler Casino, which is different from the live production, went through security camera footage of the whole game and after, after the game, um, when everyone kind of left the table, there were still some poker players there, the production people were there, and they're all, uh, you know, shooting, uh, you know, the shit. And uh, he palmed $15,000 worth of chip off of her stack at the table. And Hustler Casino Live found this out and fired him instantly. And there's a bunch of police drama in that. But all of a sudden, all the internet sleuths, the poker world, and let me tell you, man, poker players, wow, they are a class of their own. <laughs> uh, there should be a channel about them. There is. Um, so all of a sudden, he instantly became uh, her conspirator, uh, her partner. And he was pissed that she gave the money back. And he was going and getting his cut because she gave the money back. And that's what was, that was flying everywhere on the podcast, on Reddit. Uh, et cetera, on X. Um, so let's get into this. So card shufflers. There are multiple types of card shufflers. Um, like voting machines and everything else, you can buy them online. Uh, not usually with the updated uh, software, but nonetheless, you can get them there. So you can also read all the patents. So if you want to know how all of these work, just read the patent, and you'll see ob it's obvious um, how they work. Um, so there's two d different types of shufflers, and I don't know what kind I'm dealing with, but I'm familiar with both uh, before I get there. There are single deck shufflers. Uh, they're quite old, the Deckmate one. It really only knows that there's 52 cards, or it's making sure there's at least 52 cards. It doesn't know what they are. They could be all aces, but it tilts if you have more or less. Um, it randomly uh, has an RNG that shuffles the deck, uh, some uh, do it different ways. This one, it cuts, it figures out the position, it cuts the cards over and over and over again until it's uh, shuffled. And it passes a laboratory test for uh, uh, entropy and all that, so they make sure. Multi-deck shufflers. It knows the cards, it knows the count. They're really good for multi-deck games, because if you go out there like uh, Blackjack, you have six card games, where there's six, not six cards, but six decks uh, in there. When you have six decks, you don't really have time to make sure there's enough aces, enough kings. Uh, you know, that's a lot of work, and every shuffle to make sure all those cards are present. So they have cameras inside it, and you can find that in the pat uh, patent and how that works. And they're really good uh, for multi-deck games. And the RNG knows all the face values, and it uh, orders the cards by the face values, and it comes up. So this is the part I'm going to add. Um, there was a black hat talk about shufflers, and my thing is uh, sleeping here. 
because uh, I wrote down these notes. Um, before this investigation, uh, about uh, earlier in the year, there was one of the podcasters. Um, first of all, Doug Polk was one of them, and I missed Joe Ingram, and I apologize to him. Joe Ingram, there was incidents at, uh, tech or, uh, at Texas at Prime Social Poker uh, where there was an accusation of a lot of cheating. So uh, uh, Joe uh, Ingram looked into it and said, oh, you know, the multi-deck shufflers uh, can be cheated. They know what the cards are. They, um, somebody can have an uh, iPhone or whatever uh, in the background and get the list of the cards. And it's really a suspect, but that's how it works. So he disclosed this publicly early in uh, 2022. Doug Polk, by the way, great podcast. Both of them have really hilarious uh, podcasts. Uh, they're pro poker players. Uh, he also talked about it too. And he went on site and did a, a live broadcast and said, uh, I don't know what they have, but multi-deck shelters have cameras. So this was disclosed a long time ago. We knew about it, the GLI labs, uh, I knew about it, um, I looked into these theories, but um, so I knew going in. Um, I wasn't at the Black Hat talk, and what this talk about is community and research. So I'm not sure if they gave the guys credit for that or not, I wasn't there, maybe you were, but I'm gonna assume that they uh, disclosed uh, that these guys' uh, research uh, did that. Um, I, I'll eventually see that talk. So back to card shufflers. Both have firmware, software, and bunches of fun wires. Uh, the, there's a hash value for both, and there's many different ways, this goes back to gaming experience, there are many different ways to check this hash value, depending on the situation uh, that they're going into, but they're certified on the floor. Um, and as everybody knows, if a shuffling device, or really anything out there that we hack on, if it knows the value of something, then so can an attacker. That's hacking 101, right? This is a quote from my report uh, that was uh, the Hustler Live uh, put on there. So, uh, you know, that's a, a no-brainer there. Now, it ended up being a Deckmate 1, which is less, uh, uh, is a little bit more complicated to rig, and it has an EEPROM, so we have a very special device, and it basically hashes it bit for bit. And there's ways to do that with many uh, devices. Also, uh, you have to kind of be in this industry to understand the procedures that go around all those securities. There's a lot of vulnerable stuff out there, but casinos and regulators know this, and there's a lot of nuances and a lot of procedures, just like that cockpit door on a 747. So I get there, I have to inspect the shelfer for foreign devices. It's something, you know, soldered into it. I've played with them, they're fun. Uh, you know, it's, it's, since it was a, a TechMate 1, I can check the hashes. Everything, uh, everything ended up uh, really cool. My preview slides aren't here. Um, so I gave them uh, some advice. Um, I said, look, shuff, uh, you need to sh secure the shuffler between games. Uh, you need to have the dealer get a, a quick uh, uh, riffle shuffle, you know. Even though the shuffler is very convenient for getting some entropy, but still give it a little riffle shuffler, uh, shuffle. And a lot of casinos do this because it adds entropy. Now, it depends on the game. In poker, doing a quick riffle shuffle uh, like some regulated markets do, adds a little bit more entropy. So if you know the cards and it gets riffle shuffled, the volatility of Texas Hold'em poker is so great that even a percentage can change the game. It's not perfect, because you can kind of still, as a computer or whatever, can still kind of figure out that something may be near. So it does give you slight advantage, but not so much. And then I said, hey, Seal the shuffler with tamper-proof tape, or better. Then I gave him some other devices that I'm not going to uh, talk about. But when I'm telling them about securing this, and especially with the tamper-proof tape, and this is where DEF CON comes in, I know tamper-proof tape is bullshit. <laughs> I mean, it helps mitigate it a little bit. You have to know what you're doing. But you know, one year, I stroll in, I see my buddy Kive, 
and they're uh, in the tamper evident contest that was started by DT, Dark Tangent. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And he's like, oh man, watch this. I'm gonna take this tamper evident tape off of uh, this using acetone. And I think there's a great video at DEF CON 30 on YouTube that shows this. And I'm like, <laughs> like, no way. And this is not the kind of stuff I'm gonna learn on my own. I just see it and I'm like, so I know this. And then I hang out and talk with them. And you know, when it comes to the shuffler, and this is about giving, you know, this is why you should, when you're researching stuff, it's humble to give people credit. I couldn't have done it without these people. You know, Joe Grant, I first met him at Hack the Planet when, you know, it was part of the Loft group. I don't know him personally, but I've talked to him many times. He used to hang out in the hardware village where I learned about electronics. I'm not an expert, but I knew what was possible. I have DEF CON friends, Big Dog. You know, he taught me how to do rework stations and uh, a little bit of reverse engineering. All this stuff help, uh, helps. And as I told you, the Tamper Evident contest, and now it's the village. And you should go over there and uh, check it out. And uh, my buddy Kive, uh, Datagram, and of course DT, I want to thank them. I would not have known this if it wasn't for DEF CON. All right, now we're going to get into the good stuff here. RFID conspiracies. So, if you've seen, uh, if you've wa ever watched poker uh, tournaments uh, a long time ago, they used to show uh, what's called the hole cards. They used to show the, a camera built into the table, the cards, and someone up in the booth would have to type it in so it comes up on the screen. So that kind of uh, became inefficient, or it wasn't as efficient, so they started making RFID tables. These blue squares you see here are RFID antennas. And they all connect little wires in the, under that black tape to an RFID reader, which is hardwired uh, up to the booth on a computer that's running poker software. Um, and so when they uh, do that, um, they have to place their cards on that reader. This is what a card looks like. Um, I have a pack here from the actual uh, casino. Um, basically, if you know anything about RFID, you will recognize this, or if you've ever uh, ever been to a bookstore when they existed, they kind of had this text in the back page. But here you can see the antenna, and then you can see the chip in the upper left corner. Uh, these ended up being uh, my fair uh, chips, uh, ultralights, uh, and uh, at the 13.56 uh, megahertz range, and those are rated at uh, 10 centimeters uh, that you have to get to the RFID um, antenna. So if you don't, um, so here's kind of how it works. I'm not going to go into it, but you know the RFID reader is sending out a magnetic pulse. It charges the card. Uh, it sends the coil, the chip, uh, puts back the value. Uh, they're all unique uh, to each card and now it goes up to the booth and they know what card it is. Now they can display it on the monitor. So now we know who has what, and then the poker software can instantly calculate the percentages of where they are and when it's happening. All right, ooh, look at that guy. So, thank you. Please, please, please. Um, so uh, when I was there, and when, you know, I wanted to be involved. I was there for a while. I wanted to be part of production. I need to know how everything works, just like every hacker does. I want to know how this works. I want to know what you do. I want to see everything, because I need to. I got to figure out how cheating's done and other ways to cheat. So here's me at the table. Look at all those chips next to me. Um, but I already know they're watching it on camera. Um, and I wouldn't do that. Um, so here I'm working with the booth registering those cards. Before every game, the software registers new cards. So they go from ace of spades all the way down to two of clubs. So they say, okay, and they did call me ducky. They're like, put the, uh, put the ace of spades down. Okay, now the next king, et cetera. And they're registering it with the software. And uh, if a card ever goes bad, they do go bad a lot because they're fragile. They'll run down and register um, a new one. Oh boy, here comes the conspiracies. Uh, so, you know, everyone is a detective and, and, uh, on the internet, uh, and poker players are detectives. Uh, so here it goes. 
she had in that water bottle an RFID reader that could capture his cards. Uh, everyone was sort of latching. The Flipper Zero was kind of gaining more traction, so everyone started uh, latching onto that, and so she knew what all the cards wore from nine feet away. <clears throat> so I knew going into this <clears throat> that it might be total uh, BS. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I had the dealer's cards there. Now, you know, kind of be fair, um, if you knew anything about uh, RFID, there is uh, passive and active, and uh, these cards are passive, but they do, when they're sitting on there, they are charged. So really all you need to do is kind of sniff it. You don't have to worry about charging it. But if you do have a device, uh, you know, like the Proxmark, Flip a Zero, uh, that will send that out. Well, Flip a Zero does more than that. Uh, so if she did have something that uh, was charging the cards, it would have had to reach out nine feet it also would have had to skip over all the dealer's cards that she had next to him in her hand and read the value. Not only that, she has to catalog all the cards. Like, RF is just gonna get a serial number. You don't know if it's an ace or a seven. So you kind of have to see every card go by and catalog that in your water mug. Hey, you know, look, if it's possible, please let me know. Maybe that's what this is about, right? Yeah, <laughs> I got to do it all, all right? So I, I, this report's going public to poker players, right? And, uh, and I know this, so I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to have to test this. And maybe, you know, maybe I'm wrong. So I had a little bit of problem with my Proxmart um, before I went. Um, I was packing, and I couldn't get the high... Uh, frequency antenna working, and I was like, oh, crap. Uh, I called uh, my uh, good friend I met at DEF CON, uh, Disown, Matt, who's out in the audience, and I'm like, dude, my Proxmart. And he was like, dude, reach out to Iceman. And if you don't know who Iceman, I was like, ugh. And if you don't know who Iceman is, then you don't own a Proxmart. So I reach out to him, uh, and he's like, yeah, describe the problem you're having, you know, and uh, we talk for a bit, but I gotta go. So I bring it with me, and then Matt also shows me this other fun device, and says, hey, I've got one of these. It's an iCopy uh, X, and it's basically a Proxmart, uh, like with a Raspberry Pi. It's like, you don't have to plug it into your computer, it just knows. Uh, it's right there. So from a few feet away, nope, doesn't work. Um, I try to see how far I could get um, and it just wasn't feasible. Yeah, so I'm a big Mythbusters fan. So, I, you know, I, I might be wrong. Maybe there is a way to do this. So now I gotta look, well, what would it take to work? Whether it was whoever in the next room. And so, bam, here's where DEF CON comes in and research. You gotta do your due diligence and research on everything. So this guy, I've never met before, but he's a fellow and very uh, well known uh, for securing RFID uh, GP. I'm not gonna butcher his last name, but uh, Hanky. Um, this is a test he did with uh, um, high frequency, and this is the test he did with those antennas at uh, three meters. It was unsuccessful. I have a link to the paper if you wanna read it. He did eventually get like to a foot, but I was pretty sure you couldn't fit those antennas into a water mug. And don't think I didn't want to go up in the ceiling. But still, the dealer's cards are there. Let me tell you how DEF CON helped. And I knew it was BS going in because I've attended these talks out of interest. Christine uh, Paget does some mind-blowing RFID stuff. Uh, I was at both these talks, but the one that really rang to me, and I had to go find it, was 17, uh, RFID myth uh, busting. She um, talked about a lot of uh, ranges, but she did show uh, that she did get up to a foot, uh, I believe, with my fair, which is impressive. She didn't demo it, but she was talking about you could do it at home. So here it goes, and some of this uh, pertains to the last part, and I've got to speed up now. Um, someone at Discord helped me. I, he never gave me permission to use his name because he never answered back. He was like, I'm through with that clown. But he uh, helped me out with some of the radio communication. And then uh, this gentleman, uh, Ket uh, Britton, who's super scary, who's been making antennas 
I don't know, since the 1950s. You can find him in the RFID village. Um, I didn't know who he is. I once again called up my buddy Matt and, you know, phone a hacker. And I'm like, dude, do you know anybody who could build an antenna or a device that could uh, sniff an RFID card, uh, a MyFair? And he was like, you know what? He went and checked with his buddies. He said, call this guy. And I did. And I said, hey, what would it take? And he said, yeah, let me get back to you on that, buddy. I'm busy. <laughs> he kind of laughed. Uh, so that was a, a definite sign. And when it came for the solution, one of my uh, DC-404 buddies uh, in the protections, uh, he deals with a lot of radio stuff. He tinkers, he makes a lot of stuff. But um, I know he had uh, dealt with Faraday cages, because that was one of the solutions I was looking about to stop uh, any signals just for extra protection. I would have known any of these people or got any of this information. And that's what this is about. You make friends that are like knowledge that you'll always have for your life. High five. So I'm going to speed up. Signaling to remotes. This is where Kent uh, uh, really came in handy because we talked for hours on this. So let's address the TENS unit and the sex toy and uh, the vibrating chair, OK? Uh, first, her ring. It was a ruby ring worth about 120 grand. Uh, this was about an hour into the game, so it's like, okay, you could have a signaling ring, whatever. But here's the problem. The, the production booth was approximately 20 to 25 feet away behind a constructed firewall, cement and uh, uh, bars. One thing about uh, personal devices, TENS units, remotes, whatever, for your foot massager, uh, we'll call it a foot massager, um, <laughs> Uh, they typically work up, to, when it's radio, they typically work up to 30 feet because what are you going to do? Reach, you know, 100 feet with your personal device remote? And then Bluetooth is kind of what I found out is really r low rated because they're not going to invest the money when you, can, when you should have your phone for controls right there. And when it's somebody remotely from the other side of the country, you know, wherever your significant other is, uh, they have apps for that. Uh, they can control it their phone. It goes to your phone, which has to be a very close proximity. Um, you know, I learned from Kent in the uh, biohacking village, by the way, we'll talk about this in a second, that the body, uh, because of all the water, is not really a good uh, antenna. Uh, it does give problems. Kent actually developed uh, the antenna for a ring that women use to, uh, you know, put wherever, but it's for uh, measuring temperature uh, and all that uh, for ovulation to conceive. Very cool. And he told me what a, a pain that was. He's like, yeah, that's, it's very difficult. And that's why uh, uh, we're going to talk about it in a second. So I did all these tests, line of sight, 33 feet. I actually got it behind a firewall in a controlled and uncontrolled environment. Uh, you know, about 16 feet, which is impressive, but it was not by any means uh, 25 uh, feet. Um, so this is a fun story real quick. Um, I want to do an experiment. E everyone travels here, right? And you have uh, accounting departments. And I had recently had trouble. They were like, hey, what's this $5 for? I'm like, I don't have time. No, what's it for? OK, rightfully so. I get it. So I call up the, the boss man and uh, some other people say, hey, I want to buy a raw chicken, a few pounds of beef, and a sex toy, and, I, and wrap it in jeans. And I want to see uh, the remote distance from this. And then I want to expense it and not say what it's for for accounting. Ah, <laughs> uh, they said no, boo. And I was like, ah, oh, fun. Yeah, let's talk about the TENS unit, please. Uh, this is me. I took videos. I attached the TENS unit to myself and tortured myself. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, let me, I cranked that sucker up to 15 and it hurt. And I wanted to see the possibility of vibrating in a chair. Like I said, I went all avenues here. People are latching on to stuff, man. So I went through that avenue. Um, I'll, I'll never post the video, but uh, I kind of keeled over. And I was, like, <laughs> I was like, oh my god. And hey, maybe she has 
uh, that. So the report uh, ended up non-conclusive. I did say it was possible. And I said, really, you know, if you think about it, only she truly knows. Oh, back to the report. There, um, I, I didn't mention this with the shuffler. There is kind of a misprint of what Hustler said. We never said the shuffler <laughs> was unhackable. I think they meant that shuffler wasn't hacked because we gave them advice how to secure it. And we even told them, hey, nothing's ever going to be secure. It's all in the report. What security company or researcher would ever say something's unhackable? And if you read the whole thing, you should come to that conclusion. And uh, so, uh, yeah, we never said that. I think uh, when the Hustler was doing a uh, live, was doing a synopsis of uh, my evidence, they just kind of said, yeah, it's unhackable. I, sorry, I forgot to put that in there. So, hey, math real quick. Uh, poker software, um, if you know what the Monte Carlo method is, it's a measurement of uncertainty. It, it's complex. It's used in accounting, a lot of stuff. Uh, and that's what they use. I decided to do it flat out. Now, this wasn't in the report, but uh, poker players still argue with me today. She cheats. She cheated. I don't really offer an opinion, but I was thinking about this. And I said, you know, if somebody actually did know the cards, and really you have to know what's in coming up next in the hand, but we do know all the cards that went by, even if you watch the game. These are the cards G-Man, Garrett, needed to win. It's a 53 to 47% chance. If you're in the booth and you know, are you going to say, yeah, go all in? Go, <laughs> go all in with the 193K you have left. You only have a 47% chance. It's like putting it all on red uh, on the roulette wheel. So I kind of think about it. I'm not saying, you know, hey, criminals are dumb. Uh, so maybe uh, it happened. So look, uh, back to this. Why did I do this talk? I want everyone to know this. I'm big on this. You know, academia, it does provide you with a foundation of, of knowledge and how to look into things, but not like DEF CON and other uh, conventions. You come here, you go to all these villages, they will throw stuff at you that will blow your mind that you've never seen before, and you learn this, and you make friends, and you learn stuff from them that you're like, holy moly. At DC 404, we had the 13-year-old that was like, oh, this is how you smash the stack uh, in Linux. He did his first presentation back then, and you're like, wow. And everyone should know, you know, absolute knowledge, you're never going to know everything. You'll never know it, unless you invented it, maybe. But... You know, that's why, you know, my friends here and all of you out there are so valuable. And I could have done this investigation without knowing them. Um, you know, it, it's just everything. Um, this is the true saying, and I'm telling this to everybody. Jack of all trades, master of none, is better than a master of one. I think in hacking, at least. Uh, at least. And uh, Robert Anton Wilson, uh, uh, dead philosopher, that's why he's famous now. Um, he really kind of said it all. A human being should be able to kind of do everything. Build a bridge, start a word, change a diaper, uh, you know, program a computer. Specialization is for insects. And I believe that. Hey, look, I want to thank Hustler Live Casino. They did the right thing. Nick and Ryan. Ryan Feldman works really hard to keep that. Uh, the poker players that uh, really helped explain a little bit more poker to me. Joe Tall, I nicknamed this one, uh, he's Gus Fritchie, and I just call him the Fritz, that's his new poker name. D Gaff, who I set up in the booth with, uh, one of the announcers, and Parley Slow, they all explain poker. Again, thanks, you know, the Tamper Evident Village, Hardware Hacking Village, all the DEF CON uh, speakers event, my DC404 crew. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, you know, the contest, I, I was in the DEF CON documentary at Uvi, uh, uh, Ulam's uh, uh, challenge. I got dragged on stage to a short person, and I learned a lot during the competition. I was like, okay, what do you want me to do? And uh, that was fun. Here are all the links. Uh, I think it's all in the download media server. But hey, 
Uh, I was talking about Joe Ingram and how you disclose that shuffler. You can look at that for the Texas shuffler thing, and he talks about that. Um, I might add that to the slide, and Joe Ingram's uh, talking about that. Um, and uh, some more information later on the patents. I might add that, and you know, that's it, finito. Thank you. I'll be over here. I guess questions, or I think I have to leave the room, so maybe down the hall. And I have uh, the RFID cards with me if you want to see one or if you have a scanner and you want to scan one.